Now, I'm sure you've heard that Facebook is embroiled in a privacy issue crisis right now. How concerned should you be about all of this? Joining us now to break it down is Heather Buckta. She's one of the partners at Quarries and Brady LLP. Quarrel and Bra Quarrels and Brady. Yeah, I can't read my writing. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So break down, you know, what this privacy issue is all about and how mm -hmm. concerned should we be? Well, the, it, it all comes down to a matter of awareness and education. The fact is, you know, we've told our kids for years, anything you do online is mm -hmm. going to stay online. And that's certainly true for the rest of us as well. When you're on Facebook, when you're engaging in some of these activities, the information that you're putting out there, even though it's on your Facebook profile mm -hmm. and theoretically not everyone has access to your Facebook profile, you should assume that they do. Somebody does. Somebody does. That's correct. You deal with software agreements. How concerned should users be about the information that is out there? Well, it depends on if we're talking about strictly the Facebook issue, the information that we understand has been disclosed at this point is essentially just the information from your Facebook profile. Mm -hmm. So if you had your birth date on there, they would know your age. If you had your city you live in, they would know where you are geographically. Um, that kind of information that's out there and kind of posted anyway <clears throat> is theoretically already out there, right? So we're not talking about passwords and things of that nature. So there are people at Facebook who will say, well, you knew this going into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did not know that this information was being uh, delivered to other places. So can you break down what that controversy is all about mm -hmm. and where that information has been going? Yes. So with respect to this instance in particular, what we understand is that the application that was initial that initiated all of this, mm -hmm. the users that actually used that application probably did have a disclosure that said this is the information we're collecting. The issue at the time was that the Facebook integration that existed had a loophole that allowed not only access to that particular user's information, but all of their Facebook friends as well. And so that's the particular piece that was not as widely known. Okay. So at this point, for Facebook users, should we at this point dump Facebook? Depends on what your purpose would be in dumping it. Um, if the purpose is to try to protect your data, mm -hmm. I would say that is probably an ineffective route to take. Um, think of it as you know, the, the horse escaped from the barn several years ago. Right. <laughs> Taking the barn down now is not going to get your data back. Um, if, however, your point in dumping Facebook would be something else, political purposes <laughs> to make mm -hmm. a statement to Facebook, what have you, then that's a different question. Well, you mentioned political purposes because there mm -hmm. are some people who are concerned, some Facebook users, that the information that was released was used for political purposes. Do right. we know if that's in fact the case? That appears to be the case based on what's being reported at this point. Um, essentially what they did when they downloaded those profiles was dump them into a back-end database and built profiles and personality profiles of all of those individual users, which were then used for targeted marketing and targeted ads. Yeah. So what can users do to protect themselves? You know, there's a couple of things. The first is to just be aware, as we said earlier, whatever you're putting out there, on, whether it's on Facebook or any of the other social media websites um, or platforms, you should assume that somebody's going to have access to mm -hmm. it, even though technically your privacy settings may say otherwise. The second is to monitor those privacy settings. Um, there's some question about these initial users, had they changed their default privacy settings, some of this information may not have gotten out. So keeping an eye on, on again, being aware of what's actually, what's, what you're actually sharing. Um, the third is to read those privacy notices. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you're downloading something within those platforms um, or even outside those platforms, there are disclosures that go with it about what's actually being collected and who's sharing it and who's getting access to it. And I was giving you the example. Last mm -hmm. night I'm looking for a dress. I send a link to a friend of mine via email. I'm not even on you know, Instagram, Facebook, right. what have you. She wakes up in the morning and on her Instagram feed is that exact dress that I sent her. Yep. No coincidence, correct? No coincidence. There's back and tracking mechanisms, so those links have built-in widgets, cookies, so you'll hear the term, um, that then gets tracked through that email so that they can, the, the website platforms and your internet browsers, your email platforms can all see those cookies and then we'll display ads to you accordingly. Well, to quote her, this is creepy. It is a bit of a big brother effect um, and that's kind of the knee-jerk reaction when I'm talking to my clients and the mm -hmm. question is, can we do this? That's the first question. Would it creep you out as a consumer? And mm -hmm. if so, then we need to think about it. Absolutely. All right. Well, you've given us a lot to think about. So yeah, once absolutely. again, it's Quarles and Brady LLP, and you can find them at quarles.com. Thank you, Heather, for being here. We yeah, appreciate a great absolutely. discussion. Thank we'll you. We'll be right back.